Hey, welcome back to another conversation. Glad to be here today with Pastor Alan. We're in a new series called Cup of Cheer, which is just really festive and fun. Yeah. We're excited about Christmas. We really like Christmas here. We make a big deal about Christmas. It's a great time. Uh, it's also a great time to invite people to uh, to be a part of one of our gatherings. And uh, Christmas at Highlands Weekend, we'll just tell you on the front end, December 22nd, we're going to have our normal Sunday morning time. It's going to be an incredible experience. And then uh, that Monday, the Christmas Eve Eve, uh, we're going to have a candlelight service in the evening at all of our campuses mm-hmm. as well. It's going to be an acoustic service. Uh, it's going to be really cool. We we, we did this last year yeah. as a trial, and it was great. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do it again. Yeah, uh, it's going to be it's going to be good. So if you want to invite your family um, to a, a kind of an intimate um, acoustic thing, we're going to have candlelight. Obviously, it's going to be great. It'll be a great opportunity for you to come. Um, we're excited about Cup of Cheer. Why don't you share a little bit about the series? Yeah, you know, I love Christmas, and it seems like our church just absolutely loves Christmas as well. <laughs> our kids love it. So it's just a neat season that we can sort of come together and have some time, a celebration. And then we thought this year, what could we do to share with other folks? Well, everybody needs a cup of cheer, you know? Yeah. I mean, everybody. So we got some really neat ideas through the cup of cheer, how you can give that gift of an invite through a neat cup. Uh, to somebody that you care about, you know, that you want them to know what Jesus has meant to you in your life. So I think it's going to work well, and I'm I'm excited about it, James. I think we're going to have yeah. a good time through the series. Hope you'll be able to come, bring some friends, so that'll be cool. So so each week we're kind of talking about uh, something really that, that Jesus brings to us, uh, a thing that he kind of gives to us through this Christmas season. This week obviously was about the gift of hope, and I don't know about you, but like, I can I can always use some hope. Yeah. You know. I'm never I'm never like oversupplied on yes, hope. Yes. It's true. I always need more. Yeah. Hope is one of those things that uh you know, until you don't have it, you don't know how precious it is. So when you are dealing in a situation that you feel is hopeless, mm-hmm. uh that's a tough place to be. And I think the neat thing that I'm trying to sort of convey this this weekend is that Jesus is a hope that will be with us for all time. So even though some other things can be hopeless in our life, he can be the hope that can sustain us. Yeah, you talked about the passage in Hebrews 10, 23, we should hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we have for God can be trusted to keep his promises, which makes me think back of the series that we did just a few months ago on uh, the attributes of God, Mm -hmm. talking about God can be trusted, he keeps his promises, he's faithful, he's all knowing, right? He's good. um, And we can trust him. And that's the hope in there is that it's not all on me. Right. And that's, That's good news. (laughs) That's good news for me today. That's a good reminder for sure. I think to find hope in a world that's broken, you know, Mm -hmm. is um, is really the idea of Jesus coming to the world. And, And, you know, he came into a broken world when he was born in Bethlehem. And what transpired from his birth really was a gift of hope. And that is sort of what I wanted to deal with, you know, so we're sort of looking at these Advent gifts, these Advent words, which for me, growing up in the Baptist church, yeah. Advent was something like, you know, who does Advent? We don't know anything about it. Yeah. But the more I sort of studied it and went to other church services and found out about it, I thought, gosh, this is really who we are. Uh, the coming of Jesus when he was born and looking yeah. forward to his coming again is really what Advent's about. So I'm, I'm excited to sort of share these words of Advent that will help us journey to Jesus. Yeah, you know, it, Advent is this, you know, it's this coming of, it's this longing. Mm-hmm. I think of the the Christmas hymn, like, come thou long expected Jesus, yeah, you know, born yeah. to set the captives free. Like, there is this waiting, and especially this is culminating before Jesus is born. And again, we talk about this a lot, how we read the Bible, and we know the story. Mm-hmm. So we're like, all right, you know what happens? It's like, oh, look, yeah. Jesus, like, oh, it's going to work. Oh, it's going to, you know. But when you think about that moment in time, there is a gap in God really speaking to his people. Mm -hmm. There's this kind of darkness that they're walking in before Jesus comes. And so Advent is tapping into that moment, right? It's tapping into that in the darkest of night, there's this, there's the light that's coming, but you don't see that 
until it's there, right? Right. Like yeah. somebody can tell you when it's dark, you know, my kids are some, you know, especially when they're a little bit younger, they'd be afraid. Now oh, it's dad. It's so dark. It's, it's going to be okay. Cause mm-hmm. the sun's going to come tomorrow. And they're like, really? You know, is it, yeah. <laughs> is yeah. it? Cause I don't see it. You know, it's not here. Uh-huh. And there's this waiting, there's this longing, there's this expecting. Um, and then there's this hoping, right? right? And, and really you said something about hope that I thought was really good. You said hope is only as strong as who or what you put your hope in. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you put your hope in, um, I don't know, you know, your favorite sports team, they're going to let you down, <laughs> right? Like they're going to fail you. You put your hope in like winning the Powerball, like you probably won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what are we going to put our hope in? That really says a lot. No, it does. I think that's a key to understanding what Jesus can do in our life, you know, because we're, we're people who often... Jesus is almost at times our last resort rather than our first response. Mm-hmm. So we we think sometimes we know better than him and we'll put our hope here and we'll put our hope there and then we get busted every time, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying every time, but there are seasons of darkness that we all experience. We've yeah. all been through those seasons of darkness. And yeah. I think what Jesus does is bring hope to our darkness so he can lift us from addiction or you know, financial woes or even disease you know, in those dark times when we've lost somebody that we loved. I remember when I lost my dad, mm. it was just such a struggle that Christmas. It was a dark season for our family. It's just my mom and I around the table and mm. you know, half of our family had, uh, had were deceased. And, and, and yet we found that we had hope in Jesus and yeah. it was sort of a celebrity, a, a yeah. celebration kind of thing sure. as we begin to think about, you know, our family is with Jesus because well, they knew him. That and, became really important to us. And that's, you know, something we were talking about hope the other day and how difficult it is to even describe it mm-hmm. because it's not just, oh, I want this, right? Oh, I, you know, I sometimes we say that, right? Like, oh, yes. I hope I get this for Christmas, right? I yeah. hope I get this. I hope I get that promotion. But hope is, there's a deeper thing to that too, where it's even in the difficulty, like things are bad right now. But even in that, I'm still trusting that God's going to come through. And that's where like, you know, we talk about the Holy Spirit being our comforter. And, you know, sometimes that feels weird to really think about. But to to me, those are those times Mm -hmm. when God can really come through in your life when you do need him, because he is faithful to do that. Yeah, I think so, because often we get angry at God when things don't work out. So we Mm. move from trusting in him and believing in his hope to something in the world. Yeah. And you know, that only takes us farther into darkness. You know, mm-hmm. when we, you know, I, I just remember thinking, well, I guess I could go to the, you know, to the bar this weekend and drink my sorrows away. And because a lot of people that becomes an option, sure. you know, well, I'll just go there because God wasn't fair to me. Yeah. But, you know, he's really the anchor we need, even in our times of disappointment and discouragement, rather than thinking that we have the answer. If we go to him, he can pull hope even in the midst of darkness. You know, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's good. You talked about um, some things that having that hope in Jesus gives us. And I wanted to hit on one specifically, which is the you said you called it the gift of a new beginning. Mm-hmm. And I love that because um you know, maybe for you this Christmas season, you're like, man, I could use like a fresh start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to wait till January. Uh-huh. Like, I need one now. Yeah. You know, and, and really hope is something that can give us that gift. Right. Of- yeah, I think that Christmas now in our culture is the place where possibly you might come if you don't believe in any religion at all. Mm, But something about Christmas drives you to a religious service. Now, that's not really we're not we're not about religion here at our church. We're about Jesus. But if we can help people understand Jesus and help you bridge to Jesus in your life, we know your life's going to be better because we know ultimately he created us. So we're not saying that that we know it and you don't. That's not what I want to come across saying, but I'm just saying in my own desperation and darkness and time of depression and anxiety, Jesus became a foundation in which I built my life. And I want other people to experience that. So Christmas now begins the season in our culture that you might give us an opportunity to at least speak 
into your life. Yeah, and and you know, it's easy to to go from there. Maybe you've heard people make promises, you know, about what God's going to do. Oh, he's going to he's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to, you know, if you do this, he's going to do this. And it doesn't usually work that way. It does not. Uh, yeah. you know, the Bible talks about him confounding the ways of of intelligence and yeah. stuff, and he does what he wants to. Um, but I think what we can say because of of who God is and who he's revealed himself to be through Jesus that he is hope. Mm -hmm. He is a foundation that we can trust. That doesn't mean we get a new car, right? Right. That doesn't mean we get everything we want. That doesn't mean our marriage is going to be perfect tomorrow, but maybe it's just the hope to stay in it one more day. Maybe Mm -hmm. it's the hope to take that next step, to do the next thing. Um, You know, when I think about this, the story of Christmas is so odd. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's, you know, like Jesus comes to the world in the sort of lowliest of means. And so many people wanted him to be this king with a sword, right? To take down the Roman Empire. But he came in the way that his message was. Mm -hmm. There's this, um, there's this like idea from this guy named Marshall McLuhan, who's this kind of really brilliant guy. And he said, the medium is the message. And so what he's saying is that the way that something happens is what it is. It's like, it's hard to like, go share the gospel to people without money wearing like an Armani suit, you know, like (laughs) there's a tension there. Uh And so like if Jesus comes and he's like, I'm for the broken Mm -hmm. and the overlooked and he's like instant King, you know, like he's ruling, like that doesn't, there's a clash there. And so when you see the Christmas story, it is small Mm -hmm. and it is still and it is there's no room in the end right there's there are all these challenges just to him coming but he's god with us right Mm -hmm. he's emmanuel and so there's this there's this hope even in the darkness that jesus comes in a in a dark way (laughs) you know it's not like neon signs and they Mm -hmm. didn't like roll out the red carpet it's like oh jesus is coming people are like who's jesus (laughs) Uh and who's this who's mary i don't know (laughs) Yeah, I remember when I went to Israel a couple of years ago, and we go to Bethlehem. Oh, they, yeah. they have the the very place that they think Jesus was laid in this manger, <laughs> wow. you know, and uh, the, you know it's you go down steps, it's underneath, and, which is sort of like a cave kind of thing. Sure. And the, you know, hundreds of people are trying to get to see this spot. So we wait in line for some time, and then we finally get to this place where Jesus was born, and. It's pretty well documented and researched that this is the actual place, you know. And I'm I'm telling you, something just, it occurred to me that this is where it all began. You know, this, Mm. even though God had been, you know, from existence from the beginning, but when he came to earth, this is, and you know, as you look around Bethlehem, it's a broken place, you know. It's a humble place. When Mm. you look at the whole nation of Israel, it's not rich in its agriculture it's rocky and rough and yeah and here jesus comes to this place in sure. those early beginning days mm-hmm. as a sign that i'm going to mend brokenness yeah and so he's you know he's with you and so if you're watching this man anywhere wherever you're watching this today um i hope that you hear our heart and that is that god is with us yes. even in the darkness he and he's literally us. proving that uh, through the the beauty of the Christmas story. And so well, I don't want you to miss that in the midst of all the like excitement and noise. And that's fun. Like Christmas is fun. It's fun to have presents and have family and Christmas trees like do it up, right? Yeah. Enjoy, have fun Enjoy. with your family. Yeah. Don't you know you don't have to be sad because uh-huh. oh, you know, woe is me. But man, when you're in that place and maybe you're there right now and if you're not there, uh the bad news is you will be <laughs> at some point, right? Yeah, it's I not think, always up and to the right. I think Christmas is a season that if everything in your life is up and to the right, you know, everything's coming up roses for you, man, look across the road, look down the street, look That's at right. work, and give a cup of cheer, you know, to somebody who is going through a hard time. You don't know what a difference that can make in a person's life. Yeah, and that really is the hard deal is the series is that it's as easy as sharing a cup of cheer with someone. It's as easy as making that step, and maybe that's, you know, giving them a cup. If you come next week to one of our gatherings, you can get one to give to your friend, to your just one, Um, but you don't need that cup to share a cup of cheer, right? You can do it anytime. Go grab someone a coffee. Go grab someone a hot chocolate or just... 
be kind to them, right? See someone in need and do something about it. That's the story of Christmas, right? God sees our need. He does something about it. Yes. He doesn't just say, hey, be well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He comes into our mess. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a great way to kind of put that is if you're in a good place and you're like, man, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm coming up. It's like, okay, take some of that excitement and share it with somebody else because you don't have to look far to see someone who is hurting and who is in need and who needs hope. Um, So I hope you enjoyed the message this weekend and this conversation. We'll be back next week with another word of Advent. And uh, another kind of plug for all this is you can read our our blog. If you go to hf.church, you can find all of these resources. We're going to have daily content with devotionals from some of our staff. We're going to have videos. We're going to have all kinds of stuff uh, to help you stay connected connected this Christmas season. Share those with your friends. If something resonates with you on our website, man, share that with somebody. Uh, Those those are great resources for you to share. And uh, so thanks for being here with us today, and we'll see you next weekend.